Welcome at Metaverse Mentors, where we answer the most profound questions about the Metaverse, detect the latest Web3 developments, and unpack the minds of Web3 innovators. This is Sami Badawi, and today I'm sitting down with Nick Rose for some real talk about the current state of affairs in the Web3 market. Nick Rose is the founder and CEO of Eternity Chain, a next-gen platform for licensed NFTs and authenticate NFT marketplace. He's also an early investor in Bitcoin and Ethereum, or actually a really early investor. And simultaneously, he's active as a philanthropist and environmentalist. So that's a combination that promises everything for a multidimensional conversation. Since, since early 2022, I've had and heard a lot of people saying that NFTs are absolutely dead. Many of the people that were caught into the hype 2021 are now gone but is this true have nfts truly come and gone so soon well we are going to find that out in this episode with nick rose before we start four takeaways from this episode number one the difference between smart money and dumb money so where does smart money go and what are the features of dumb money how can you recognize that secondly the financial dynamics of speculative assets what makes them thrive and what completely destroys them? And thirdly, the formula for a successful Web3 company. Is there generally a secret formula for a successful Web3 company or is that a myth? And fourthly, how to deal with competition in Web3? How do you address that? Having said that and summarized the highlights, let's go right into this episode. Hope you enjoy it. Over the next few decades, the metaverse will become immensely more advanced and integrated in our daily lives. Some people think the metaverse is just a hype. Others believe it to be the greatest evolution of the internet. Together with the sharpest minds in this space, we are going to explore the future of the metaverse. We want to understand the impacts of this new world. And in this show, we will find the answers. Welcome to Metaverse Mentors. So welcome everybody at Metaverse Mentors this week. This is your host, Sami Badawi. And today I'm joined by the entrepreneur, Nick Rose, founder of Eternal Labs and a lot of other interesting blockchain web three projects. We're going to do a deep dive into what he's doing in his daily life and what they are trying to accomplish in the NFT Web3 and play to earn gaming uh, space. Thank you for joining us, Nick. Thank you, Samir. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to diving in this conversation and exploring more about life of a Web3 uh, entrepreneur, what your guys are doing with Eternal Labs and your NFT marketplace. But before we really dive into a bit more deeper, can you walk us through your background and how you got introduced in Web3 and what your journey uh, has been, Nick? Yeah, so, so sorry for my connection went out for a second. So I am, so I'm Nick Rose, the CEO of Eternal Labs and Eternity. Um, I've been in the blockchain space for about 11 years. Um, I completely got introduced to the space accidentally. Uh, back in 2011, I met somebody who told me about the concept of how, a block, how the Bitcoin blockchain works and, 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 and the pros and cons of decentralization and, 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 and all that fun stuff. Um, I got really excited with it. It was something new for me. It sounded crazy back then, but um, you know, I do this very, very often. I get very curious and I get very excited with things I don't understand. Uh, so I, I, I did a deep, deep, big dive and, and I started exploring and meeting people and started traveling, going to conferences and joining the very tiny community. Because back in the day, 2011, 2012, the community was very small. Uh, very specific areas in the world had people who were in, in, interested in the blockchain. Um, most of the people were in New York back then. Um, so that's what I did. I, 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 I met a lot of people in person. I, I, I tried to understand how blockchain works and I started coming up with ideas of how can we solve real world problems using the block, using blockchain technology. Um, so that was my introduction. Um, the breakthrough came when Ethereum was, was, was launched by Vitalik Buterin, Gavin Wood and those guys um, in 2013, um, 14. Um, so uh, that was when I saw the blockchain industry more of a business 
uh, opportunity um, because by building Ethereum, they gave the ability to founders and, 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 and developers to create platforms within a platform, using a platform, um, like a plug and play. Uh, so that's, that's what got me really interested after into building a career in the blockchain. And, you know, I started investing in other projects and, and meeting founders. And yeah, eventually um, I, I was now a, a person who have been in the blockchain space for a while. Uh, I've invested in a bunch of companies. In 2020, I launched my own company, which is Eternity, the first authenticated NFT marketplace for brands and individuals. That's a really long uh, journey, even uh, before I think most guests we've seen at uh, Metaverse Mentors. Just to uh, get the timelines clearly, when was it that you start like kind of professionally? I know you st you started your own uh, well, market in 2020, but was this in 2014 with Ethereum? Was this kind of site researching as an interest of a hobby or how yes. did that look? So I've bought Bitcoin back in 2011. I bought Bitcoin out of curiosity and held it for a few years. Um, I kept buying because I really loved the idea of there might be a decentralization of money and that might be the new uh, money standard. Obviously, you know, Bitcoin is way more than that and it's, 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 it's much different and it's not going to replace fiat, but it's going to be an alternative uh, currency for transactions or store of value. Um, till 2013 was more of a fun introductory journey for me and learning journey. 2014 is when I went full in, all in blockchain career and I wanted to, I could after advice, I had the experience to advise founders. I had the experience to guide and incubate other projects and that's what I did. And first as an investor, you know, after, you know, I'm, I'm very into gaming, I'm very into art myself. So I wanted to build something myself that, that would let me create what I was dreaming of, right? Which is owning your own assets, your own digital assets on the blockchain. And I wanted to connect gaming somewhere there. And that's what we were exactly doing. So being a founder gave me the freedom to, to kind of do what I wanted and not just investing in other people's dreams and ideas. I just wanted to do my own thing. By the way, I still have an incubator on the side and I still invest in other founders because you know there's a lot of smart people out there a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of um, creative people that come with fun ideas every other day. So investing is like a hobby for me right now. So really I do meet you. Really yeah. interesting. And this will, of course, translate in what you're now doing with your uh, venture or community uh, yeah, on the intersection of NFTs, Web3. But just to go full circle, you, you come across like someone who is quite curious and not afraid to tackle uh, unfamiliar problems uh, actually the contrary was this also your background before you got acquainted with blockchain did you have any kind of technical education no. or like it experience or what was your background before that no so my sister is a coder she's a she's a developer she builds she writes code and my father was a trader uh, traded the greek stock market back then when i lived in greece so i had a little bit of experience of how how was seeing somebody investing in the basic fundamentals and what do you look into a founder and how do you look in P&Ls and like a basic idea of what it takes to invest in a company. So, and my mom was an art, is an artist. Um, so I had the three elements I needed really um, to that kind of define my life. Uh, in the start, I wasn't looking to do any of the three. I collected art because I liked it, uh, because I thought it looks cool, you know. Uh, I have a lot of tattoos when I see them fully as art. The only reason I started getting tattoos because um, I think it's artistic and nothing else. So it was kind of a combination of the way I was raised, uh, what I've been built, what, what I'm building today. Uh, but it, no, I didn't go to school, and you know I have I have very strong opinions in school and college. I don't believe in school or, or college. I think YouTube and Google is the best college for anyone who wants to be successful or for anyone who wants to build to build stuff. Um, anyone who wants to learn anything, it's out there available for free. So Elon Musk is sending rockets to space and he hasn't studied astrophysics. He's just studied a lot of books himself and, and that's not the only guy. I have a lot of friends who are big CEOs and, 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 and they've built huge companies just by go out, going out there and doing it themselves and learning as you go. That's key for everybody. You learn as you go and it's up to you how much time you're going to dedicate and be good at it because 
saying, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna study. Like I'm talking about ultra studying. Like I've spent thousands of hours learning about how blockchain technology works to be able to implement it and to be able to teach it to other people and explain it to other people. So it's all, it's all about how much work you're, you're, you're putting into something. Yeah, and I think that applies only exponentially more for uh, the Web3 and blockchain space because whereas you could go to a university to study a, a boring or a super interesting curriculum for months and months, it will get outdated and irrelevant after some year. Whereas if you study live on YouTube in real time what's going to happen now and you can discipline and dedicate yourself towards that, I think that's far more relevant and also to speak with yeah. people like we are doing here on uh, the podcast that's also also actually one of my main resource of learning i listen to the bankless podcast for example to get up to date with my uh blockchain knowledge because there's also uh, plenty of uh, resource to learn from that so fast forward now we are in 2022 you started with your own uh, project and company in 2020 can you walk us uh, from that time point yeah, so Eternity was an idea that actually was, it was born after I saw CryptoPunks going live. So me and my co-founder Marcelo, we, were, we had this idea and we were talking about it for years before we actually launched it. Uh, we were just trying to see what we want it to be and, and, and how is it going to be. So it took us a while to launch Eternity. And after we launched it successfully in 2020, you know, lots of things had happened. Uh, the company grew from three people to almost a hundred people right now, you know, um, full-time employees, uh, independent contractors, developers, um, companies that we're, we're working on, like if our whole, our whole headcount is over a hundred people right now with a gaming arm, with a DeFi arm, with a collectibles arm. Um, we recently closed a $20 million round, uh, equity round for Eternal Labs. Um, from some pretty cool individuals and, and, and smart investors we really wanted to bring on board. Um, highlighting Michael Rubin, the founder of Fanatics, the biggest collectible store, uh, sports store in, in America. Thomas Wu, a producer of League of Legends and um, Sims and the produ producer of Arcane on Netflix that was one of my favorite animated TV shows. Um, we brought on board some pretty good investors that we see as strategics. Uh, because they've been advising us on the on, on things we want to get better at and um, they've been great for us. So, yeah, um, before that, Eternity operated, operated for the first year um, doing full-on IP acquisition. You know, the main goal for Eternity is to build the biggest authenticating library of IP in the world. We've worked with the likes of Lionel Messi, um, Shaquille O'Neal, Tony Hawk, um, Fernando Datis and many, many other celebrities or notable figures, I'd like to say. We help them launch their own collectibles, uh, help them launch their own NFTs and, 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 and trading cards. And besides that, we've done deals with, with brands like ABG, which is one of the biggest uh, licensing companies in the world. They own the rights for the Merle Monroe estate, uh, Elvis Presley estate, Mohammed Ali estate. We've done all those partnerships to strengthen the brand and create collectibles for, for the fans of all these unique individuals you um, must definitely be proud uh, about those names those are not uh, some light uh, heavyweight names but i i would say the really top-notch players from different uh, categories yeah. and uh, verticals so that, that's really cool but how would you characterize like in 2020 just or perhaps already earlier conceptualizing an id with your co-founder and going after those ip right uh, deals into turning uh, and raising 20 million uh, seat round and having 100 employees uh, yeah, under or around you. Because I can imagine that's a quite monumental shift, right? Yeah, it's a monumental shift. I mean, listen, we always thought it's gonna get easier, but it's not, it gets harder and harder. And you know, the more money you raise and the more, the bigger things you wanna do, there is more expectations and there is tougher competition out there, but you know, we love competition. Today, actually, this week, actually, we know I live in LA. The majority of the team lives in in, Flor in Miami. Some, we have people in Europe, Hong Kong, Argentina, San Francisco. But this week is a special week because, you know, we all meet once a month. We do these work trips, and everybody comes here in our office, and we we all work together in person. Um, 
you know, we do a lot of brainstorming and we try to solve the toughest problems that are out there in person. Um, so yeah, listen, uh, we love a challenge and we love um, rough markets like the one we are today. And for us, actually, this is fuel to, ha we love problems, we love solving problems. So for us, it's really fun actually being in a situation that we have now to manage expectations and we have to deliver, right? You have now all these investors yet you, you didn't have before, right? And these investors want to see results. So, you know, it makes our job more, um, it puts more pressure on us to, to deliver. You say two things I really like. One is I love competition and secondly, we love solving problems and the dynamics that we are in. Can you illustrate that? Because we are now in a beer market you see whereas a couple of months ago everything was super bullish all nfts projects were awesome now nfts are completely flat and irrelevant according uh, to the media there's a lot of imitations also if, if we are speaking about competitive landscape how do you kind of perceptualize everything what's going around now and try to stay focused uh, on steering uh, your team uh, towards your objectives. Yeah, so to the point you just brought that a few months ago everybody was saying NFTs are the best and now everybody's saying it's a fraud and there is nothing. I'll be very, I'll try to be polite and honest, like this is usually the dumb money. Dumb money move with trends and dumb money move with, with what, what Twitter says, right? Smart money is still bullish. Smart money is investing hundreds of millions today the companies with with visions and, and good teams and companies that can execute, right? So the smart money is still here, right? And the blockchain technology has evolved so much since 2009 that's, that's proven that it has exponential growth. If you zoom out in the market and you look at the... At the at, and you, so if you zoom out at the market so, and you sorry, look at the Nick, chart... We, we, lo we lost you there for the last uh, yeah, 10 seconds. Sorry. Sorry, let me say that again. So if you zoom out on the market and you, you look on, on, on the whole crypto presence as a whole, you'll see that the growth has been exponential and it's going to continue to, to, to grow, right? Uh, the blockchain solves a lot, of, a lot of issues in the world from transparency, from digital ownership um, that the world needs. So I'm not a financial advisor. You know, I never tell anyone what to buy or what to do, but I'm personally very bullish into the blockchain technology and the non-fungible tokens in general. You know, now, does that mean every project out there will succeed? No, because it comes down to founders and it comes down to people. You can't blame a technology if people failing to fulfill um, their promises and fulfill, and that stands for us as well. We might promise you that we're going to do that and we're going to do the other. We might fail, but... Obviously, that's not part of our, our, our vocabulary, but like, like I'm just bringing an example. That doesn't mean the technology is horrible. That doesn't mean the non-fungible token technology is horrible, right? So you can't blame really technology for, 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 for market conditions. Market conditions has, has, are, are defined by other things, you know. You have inflation, you have hyperinflation, you have a terrible war in Ukraine. Um, you have so many things that, 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 that play a role on how a market will Will, will move, right? But what I think is, as the market matures long term, those fluctuations will, will be will be less. What's the best word for it? Will be less brutal because those those massive this massive volatility causes uncertainty. I get it, um, but again, I, I don't really agree, and I don't really see um, that. That's kind of my take on the long run of the blockchain, uh, and on the competition side. On the competition thing you brought up is, you know, back in two thousand nineteen. 20 when we were preparing to launch and we would have a call with Lionel Messi's agents or with with ABG or with Warner Brothers we would explain NFTs and it was they were way it was way easier for us to get deals done right 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 because you know we were one of the few companies to go after brands now you have 20 other companies some of them have raised hundreds of millions of dollars so now there's the competition aspect that has who's going to pay us more money Who's going to create something cooler? How fast can you do it? How, who's going to have the better artist? So that's what I mean when I'm saying competition. There is more competition in the market. Um, which is, to me, that's healthy because it incentivizes us and it, it, it really pushes us to do better and, 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 and come up with break, break, breakthrough, breakthroughs and, and you know, fun ideas that nobody's done before. So yeah, 
we embrace that and we're kind of excited to be honest. This is a natural mindset, Nick, that you have because, uh, yeah, you, you, you come across qu quite analytical when looking at those macroeconomic uh, factors, which obviously you cannot influence. But I look at this as an investor and then sometimes I think, whoa, what's happening here? I'm based in Amsterdam. What's happening here to the euro? Now we have this Ukraine. Whoa, th this is like uh, an accumulation of different negative yeah. things, oh, so, so to say. Ah, okay. It's all macro in my opinion, right? Like I said, a lot of people have different opinions, but I've been, I've been in the market, uh, in the blockchain market. I was like that exactly um, for a long, long time to know that there is things that happen that influencing a lot um, the performance of those assets. Uh, and, and like I said, a lot of those assets are not even investments assets. A lot of those tokens are access tokens, right? The price, and there is the only thing that's moving those things is, is supply and demand for now, but there is something something else that's moving those markets, and that's speculation, right? Uh, those are very speculative assets. They, you know, when, in my personal opinion, again, I'll give you an example. Eternity, Eternal Labs. Now we're we're building a video game, the Exorians Universe, right? We're saying that the game is going to do one, two, three, and four, right? And when we're able to to execute the one, two, three, and four you'll be able to use the in-game token to purchase those characters and play the game and earn rewards and, and do all that. Till the game is ready, there is no proof that we, we will do that. You, you know, our community takes our, takes, our, takes our word for it, our investors takes our word for it, uh, takes our word for it. So they all speculate, oh, we like Nick, we like his team, so now we're going to invest in this company or we're going to buy access tokens now that is cheap. So when the game is ready, uh, I'm going to enjoy the game. But when... An, event, an unrelated event happens in the world, the first thing you want to sell is those speculative, item, uh, 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 those speculative assets because you're not really enjoying the game today. You will enjoy the game when the game is ready. So the first things to go are the speculative item, item, uh, assets. And that stands for everything, for the board game Yacht Club, for Clone X, for everything that they have roadmaps and promises for the future. You know, uh, Yuga Labs is building a metaverse and they've been posting bunch of betas. I will sell the ape token right away and I will sell my apes right away when there's uncertainty in the world. Unless you don't really care and you really want to be looking forward to playing this game um, and you can hold it. But the majority of the world doesn't operate like that, right? The majority of the world, they want to feel safe, they want to make sure, and they, they feel safe in fiat. I've trained myself to don't feel, to, to feel safe <laughs> With that, so but it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of nerve, and it takes it takes a lot a, a long time to master. And not everybody should do that. That's that just works works for me. It has paid off for me financially within um, my career. Uh, so I'm just gonna continue and do what works for me. But like I said, you people invest funds they need, and that's why when the world goes to shit, the first first thing they do is. They sell the speculative assets to take back their funds, you know. But yeah. you know, if it works for them, fine. But but like I said, that, that doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah, everybody has his own approach. Completely agree. So yeah. you mentioned already some very interesting things. The people you're working with with in the NFT space, building our uh, own kind of metaverse uh, sl slash game. How would you characterize? in like three pillars uh, where your company is focusing on do you see yourself more as a, a video game company in the future or more as a nft intermediary that uh, yeah that connects so, people who are looking for particular yeah, things how so, do you see yourself so yeah so we, we eternity is a collectibles uh, it's a collectibles nft marketplace that's it with with DeFi application because we have a lot of fun DeFi stuff if you go eternity.io you'll see a lot of fun DeFi stuff we, we have in there which is decentralized finance. Now, Eternal Labs in general is a studio. It's, it's a studio that's specializing in collectibles, NFT collectibles, gaming, and art. Those are the three pillars of, of our organization. Um, and those are the th things we're going to be focusing on. Um, Eternity is already live and working. We've been, we've been, you know, we've sold about $15 million worth of collectibles last year only. Um, some huge partnerships out there. Eternity is rolling. We all, we're launching our iPhone Android app the next couple of weeks. Uh, so it's perfect there. The next challenge for us is the Exorians universe. It's our first brand, our own brand, 
which it's going to be primarily a video game, but at the same time, the story that's going to consist of the video game is going to be portrayed in a comic book, right? And the, co the comic book will be sold via the Eternity Marketplace. That's going to be tradable to everything else. So our companies might doing, we have, our, our, our three pillars are different, but interconnected at the same time. So everything is on Web3, everything is on the blockchain. So the, the, there's different teams that are running each pillar, right? But at the same time, there is people who work on all pillars, like myself, right? Or yeah. our, C, our CTO, Marcelo, or our chief of product, Alex, or our CMO, James. Um, so, so our companies are inter interconnected, but separated at the same time because there are separate brands. A gamer who wants to play the Exorians universe and read comics might don't care about uh, art or, or our athletes who, 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 who release NFT collections, right? So we have all that. So Eternal Labs is like a general studio with, with three pillars that's going to be focusing on, on developing those, those pillars. Yeah, I love that and I think it can strengthen uh, each other. So there I have one very key question that I have to ask every company which is involved in gaming and especially on the intersection with Web3 because we have seen the XC Infinities, we have seen the sandboxes. But if you go now to these worlds, those are almost close to death actually. There, there is not a lot, of, a lot of engagement going on. They were initially primarily focused on the monetary side instead of where I was looking for when I was younger, I just want to have fun in the game. And I want to see, I'm interested in hearing from you, what's your approach in taking that with building your own video game? Because of course we want to have interoperability, having uh, the ability to extract our assets and use them elsewhere and not wasting our time. But simultaneously, it's all, the assets is also about fun, you know? Yeah, so first of all, I want to say, I want to give credit to Axie. They were the first ones to come up with this, with this amazing play to earn model. Uh, and everything that comes first, you know, we get to be lucky to observe what they made, that, what they did wrong. And we can now Learn. not make, don't make the same mistakes. So nothing but love and good words for Axie Infinity. I think they've built a monster. They've built a massive company, very smart people over there. Um, the, definitely their model has some flaws, especially the, the, the economic model has some flaws and it's fully, and, and the way they are approaching, um, it's play to earn. So people are literally playing the game to earn money. So that's not fun for me. I'd never want to build a play to earn game because where's the fun of that, right? I play Rust and I've played um, Fortnite and I've played Call of Duty, not because I was making money, because I had fun with my friends. But now imagine if you still like the game you're playing, and that's why our game will take two years to be ready and not six months or two weeks. Ah, yeah, because yeah. our game is not focused on play to earn. Our game is, is play and earn. So first of all is have fun. You don't have to earn if you don't want to. So there's gonna be free to play tournaments. You don't have to get involved at all with, with, with earning anything, but earning will be an option. So if you want to earn, there's going to be an earning category. You'll play more competitive and you'll play with, with, with people you, don't, you, you, don't, you, you want to compete against. And, and by winning and hitting certain milestones, you get to earn tokens. Now, those tokens translate to an in-game currency that you can convert to, to ERN, obviously. Um, but, 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 like, but like I said, the, 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 our, our, our priorities is we want players to like the game. And after players like the game, they will, we will give them the option to earn money if they choose to. So if, uh, and by the way, we're, we're building our economics completely different. We have a dual token economy, but our economics are, we're going to take some risks there and, 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 and build it completely different with how Axie works. Some similarities there for sure, um, but, but our goal is to, to, to try groundbreaking things that nobody's done before, and that's what we're going to do. Um, Can you feel so, something yeah. about that uh, specifically? Not, uh... not yet, but the moment I have it more concrete, I have no, I have no problem coming back to the podcast and revealing some stuff here. Um, yeah, would love to do that. Definitely interesting. That in, in podcast thirteen we talked with uh, you, Joran from from the game Castle of Blackwaters, and he also illustrated the problem that in the previous play to earn game, and I'm happy that you are mentioning play and earn that you heavily have only value extractors in the game and it relies a lot of hype and when the growth stagnates all the tokens yeah. come collapsing down and that's obviously yeah. something you don't want there is 
there is many ways to for players to earn tokens by playing a game, but that's not the only way. I don't want to reveal yet how, because, you know, like I said, the competition is high right now. So yeah. there's many ways for people to, to earn, even without playing, just by contributing in the system. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll, really we'll, interested we'll, in, in hearing that, Nick. We, we need to follow up uh, later for sure, some, for sure. some months and that be interesting to learn. Everybody everybody was listening. Go follow the Exorians. It's called Exorians on Twitter and stay tuned. We're, we're building something really funny there. Yeah, where are we looking for uh, in the future, uh, Nick? In two years you have the game. I like that you take a longer uh, time horizon and not yeah. the six months, which is completely unrealistic to build something fun if you look at the fun games that are out there today. But what are you most excited about for the coming uh, yeah, six months to uh, two years? Yeah, well, we're going to launch our playable characters. So we're going to sell 12,000 playable characters um, to the community. We were supposed to do this in July, but we, we held it back. You know, we, we spoke to the community. We always take into consideration their thoughts. So we wanted to wait a little bit. So most likely September, August, September, we'll be able to we'll make those characters available. Uh, but like I said, I'm very excited because I want the community to be able to own their own characters, right? So they can eventually have them and play the game and... There is so much more stuff, DeFi applications that we will do um, before the game launch and the comics will come out uh, this winter as well. So people will, will get to learn the story and what's happening within the Exorians universe and why this is special, who is who and what's its, 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 its hero's role into the universe, right? So there's a lot of fun stuff that's coming. Um, right, really interesting. Is the primary channel uh, Discord to uh, stay up to date with uh, yeah, yeah. the Apollo updates? Or? Follow Eternity Chain on Twitter and Exorians on Twitter and, and join the Discord. So there's a lot of stuff going on there. We, we, we'll, we'll do AMAs as well and we, we post a lot of behind the scenes stuff in there so people can see. Okay, very fun, very fun. I will post all the links uh, in the comments below. So uh, as we are closing, uh, yeah, near, nearer towards the end, I have two closing questions as we are speaking with a web3 entrepreneur a lot of people are listening to metaverse mentors either already operating in web3 or are interesting to learning more or perhaps pursue something more professional for people that want to yeah become engaged in the web3 space more professionally what do you look at as an entrepreneur to say okay this is someone i want to have on board is that some really technical background or what kind of characteristics are you looking at uh, nick yeah, it's a combination of both. Um, the major, I've ha you're talking about hiring people, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, few of our best employees and partners have been hired literally through Twitter, and some because they've DM'd us. And so, passion is very important. If somebody is very passionate to learn, uh, you know, I've gotten DMs from people. Hey, I'm a developer. I love what you guys are doing. I'd love to have an interview, and we'll do that interview. Obviously, you know, the majority, the majority of those are not what we're looking for. But there is some really good people out there that that all they have is they're passionate to learn. And I'm a firm believer of of learning. Learning without a background can really work. I mean, I've done it myself, so I don't really need a lot of examples. It's all about passion and willingness to learn and love for what you're doing. And number two, a technical background always help. If you've worked for other companies, if you have experience, we take those very, very serious into consideration. We have, we have a lot of people that have amazing backgrounds. You know, Marcelo is ex-Google, ex-Facebook. We have people ex-CNBC, ex-huge ex licensing companies that have been licensing IPs for us. Um, but like I said, that's not enough. You need passion and you need to love to love what you're doing and you need to be a team player. So those are very, very um, firm. Those are very, very important um, talents we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, guys, stay curious. That's why you're listening to Metaverse Mentors on a weekly uh, basis. That's the way yeah. uh, you can learn and to some other channels. Is there, Nick, uh, a closing message or a team that you would like to touch upon to close off with uh, for the listeners or perhaps uh, any of your thoughts now uh, at this time uh, this point in time no i mean it's great life is good uh, get out there don't spend all your time in a computer even us that we, we're literally working all day we spend as much time in nature as we can very very important for your well-being and follow our channels and, and and stay tuned we have some pretty cool stuff coming especially if you're a collector or a gamer 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Nick. I really like this uh, conversation, and we'll definitely be looking forward to follow up and uh, learn more about tokenomics and uh, what has been sure, done sure. Uh, and where you're then uh, at that point. Thank you very much, Nick. Well, thanks, man.